In this um, lecture module 8.5, um, we will continue to discuss a few thoughts and tips on deep learning and problems that you can have with the deep networks and convolutional neural networks uh, and such. So, um, recall uh, the deep network and we've seen many times is composed by multiple layers one after the other before a final classifier and each layer usually has uh, input images on the previous layer convolution or operation that creates other maps some kind of a reduction in data so sub subsampling or pooling and then a non-linearity so that you you can stack multiple layers and don't collapse into a single linear layer. So sometimes you train deep networks, for example, a face detector, um, and you get results like this one. Uh, the object that you really wanted to detect gets detected everywhere, everywhere else. Um, what could be the problem? Um, there are several problems that uh, uh, could cause this, and we're going to discuss it in the next slide. Um, most many uh, a real time a real application uh, often face this problem um, and so don't be afraid if you if you find yourself in this situation you just have to uh, really try to adapt the network to the data in a better way and rethink your application um, so some of the problems that can happen uh, I'm not going to go too much into details about all these issues, but uh, there could be data set issues. So data set could be um, really have different statistics in real life application. Uh, how can this be? Well, for example, you collected the data with uh, one camera and you and you use the uh, another camera or you use a different system or uh, the camera that you had an RGB and now is YUV. Uh, or the pre-processing could be slightly different. So, so just to make sure that you have more or less the same kind of pre-processing and the same kind of distribution, same kind of data with uh, hopefully similar kind of a noisy pattern. Ideally, and that's what happens in, in humans, is that uh, they learn with their own visual system. It's pretty much a static uh, entity that uh, never changes with time or changes slowly with time. Uh, so once you learn with your system, you're very good with it. Uh, usually you want to try to learn the data of, with your final your final application like this. Uh, and having data sets and, um, and, and training sets um, that are artificially created can generate this problem pretty often because the data is not significant. Uh, now, a lot of people nowadays uh, just test their application with a, with a data set. So they have a training set and a test set. Uh, and they, they train their, their model and uh, just to check on that. Um, and so uh, rarely people see this, this problem. Um, I think it's a mistake. Uh, it should be corrected. Paper should also show um, in, uh, in real life application, maybe show a demo or a video that in real life their application performs well because that's a really big step. Uh, so data set also, you know, if you train on one data set, you will probably fail in another because the data sets are quite different. So you have to make sure, like as I said before, that you collect the data with the same uh, instrument that you're going to test it with in real life application possibly. Um, then um, if uh, even if you save yourself from these two problems. Um, you, know, you could have the wrong test set, for example. Uh, it, the problem could be slightly more trivial. For example, you didn't, um, you collected your train uh, set uh, in one day and the test set another day with just like a slightly different condition or you di and you didn't uh, um, randomly randomly shuffle all the, the test set and the, and the training set. This could be all problems that you could have. Um, if the problem still persists, <coughs> like uh, most probably in this case, because in this case the face detector that we showed was working fairly well minus a few uh, other episodes, well, uh, you could have um, other kind of problems. So mostly, usually it's, it's overfitting. And for this I refer uh, to some lectures by um, you know, Andrew Eng and uh, Jeffrey Inton or on Coursera 
that you can find um, to tell you a little bit more about uh, these problems. But you know, the main idea is the model is too complex and learns noise in the data, not just the data. So for example, you might have too many filters here or too many filters here, too many filters here, or maybe you didn't need a third layer, uh, or maybe you have too many connections, or you're fully connected here, you have too many parameters to learn. Um, so when you have so many parameters and you have a lot of data, what happens is that if you use a, you know, stochastic gradient descent or uh, methods like that, um, then you, you could learn uh, these parameters could really adapt to, to, to the data and because there's so many parameters they can and, and they do a great job with um, with back propagation algorithms and gradient descent that um, they really adapt not just to the uh, to the image you want but also to the noise so for example look at an image like this if you want a face detector uh, usually you know you might not just have a face you might have some background and you don't want your model to learn the background you really wanted to model the face so um, you really have to make sure that the model is not too complex uh, and doesn't learn and just learns the data not not the noise also you need to make sure that the model adapts to the data what does that mean um, we, we we looked a little bit before but you know, in the case of images, for example, convolution is a good operation that you can do because you, you keep the data local. So you need to know a little bit about the statistic of the data, the fact that images have local properties, um, you know, that are in 2D. So convolution is a good operation for it. Maybe for audio, you don't want to do convolution. Definitely, maybe not 2D. Maybe you want to do it 1D. Maybe you want to have a recurrent network and so forth. So this, uh, this network model here might not be good for, for audio, and in fact, probably it's not. If you look at um, uh, Jeffrey Hinton's lectures on uh, the latest results, uh, you will find that the network is, is quite different. So you're going to have to really make sure that your model adapts to the data. And this is like a lot of black magic and uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of knowledge that has to go in here. Uh, so it, it's really beyond the scope of uh, my class, at least for to, uh, for today. Um, we might talk about this in in uh, in later lectures. So just to think about uh, these issues, if uh, if this is what's happening to you. Another issue why uh, this problem can occur is the following. So I mean, if you think about overfitting, is uh, think about uh, the fact that you have. Um, your network is basically learning, uh, is extracting feature at one of these points, uh, and somehow the features in a in a quite complicated scenario like you know this um, um, this this shirt that has a, a complicated pattern will will uh, excite a lot of uh, similar features. So maybe they are similar to the face, or in the same you know you could think of that in which one of these corners you could think of finding some kind of an eye and a nose ear, um, even though it's not exactly a face. Um, you know, that's, that's basically what overfitting is all about. It's, it's basically the model finds things that isn't, they're not there. Um, you could also have the, the opposite problem, which is that um, if, you train, if you train on a face, for example, that's great. But if you train on something, on something smaller, then uh, you know you might not be able to learn things. So for example, the ComNet and the Deep Network they really need features to learn, right? So if you if you want to learn, if you pass them training images, things like this. So a patch of 32 by 32 in this image. There's really nothing in here. There's no feature uh, in this patch. Okay. Uh, the features are, are larger here, so you would what you would have to do is you would have to take this image of a face and maybe reduce it to 32 by 32, so that all the important features, you know, the hairline, the position of the nose, the mouth, and the eyes, are actually. Uh, and you have to keep remembering about this um, and looking at your training set. Uh, and if it's if it's in your in your training set, you see things that um, don't have a lot of features or they're hard to recognize even by a human. They might be hard to recognize even by a deep network. So if the object is too simple, it is hard to learn it. So like um, a picture of uh, of um, 
of a piece of paper, for example, or of a pen, a very hard object to um, understand uh, with a deep network because they would be just uh, like a little line here or they would just uh, be plain white. For that, you will need more context and things that we'll talk about in, in visual systems later. So one idea that can help a deep network is uh, um, instead of, um, if your object is fairly large, uh, what you can do, of course, is to increase uh, the input. Another thing that you can do also is to maybe feed your network, not just uh, a little patch, but also a larger patch and also an even larger patch together. So you feed a more multiple multiple resolution at the same time. So this is done by sometimes by the pyramid, but the pyramid doesn't really, the pyramid that we've seen in Comnets doesn't really do this. It doesn't make you recognize this as part of a face. Um, you will just check for a face um, at, at this scale and, uh, and reduce the scale so that it makes it as big as the window. But if you wanna, if you want to train for more context, uh, you can think of the fovea idea which is basically, uh, imagine that you have a comnet like this one, and instead of having just uh, one input image here, you could have three input images, uh, three different scales, so smaller portion of this, a bigger portion of this, and even bigger portion of this going in. Uh, and this is really, um, it's the full idea, it's sort of a, the multi-scale pyramid. It's to add the more of the images input to the comnet really helps the detection. So instead of um, adding just, uh, if you're looking for example at this pixel here, instead of adding just uh, uh, this little patch over here, um, you might add uh, you know a larger patch at a higher resolution and so forth. So um, there are basically three, each pixel, at each pixel here, um, a 32 by 32 area will be fairly weird fairly uh, contain maybe not an enough information here but the 32 by 32 image here portion here will be contain more information the 32 by 32 here will contain even more information so you could for example see the wheel of the car in here the front of the car here and the full car in here and so you can uh, pass these three inputs to a component um, you know these are basically subsampled version um, of this of the input image and you can compute all the three components uh, in parallel um, and then combine them together basically combine the outputs together and that really gives you more information about uh, the entire object and this is what is done in this paper by Clement Farabé in uh, Jan Le Can, um, in uh, this year 2013 um, and we'll discuss a little bit more on this paper later